Good morning. Welcome to Good Vibes. I'm your host, Lisa Houck, here with the fabulous Dane Henning. Here I am. Made it. Glad to have you again. I'm happy to be here. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Um, what do you, you think we ought to talk about Key to Quality Awards? I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah. We're, we're, it's getting it's getting a little getting a little close. We have a lot of new members, and mm -hmm. so a lot of them have never been to CNA Fest and may not know about the award ceremony. So let's tell them a little bit about that. Yeah. On the second night of CNA Fest, we have a big award ceremony called the Key to Quality Awards. It's a red carpet event. Dane hosts the red carpet. It's yeah. all um, televised on C here on CNA TV. And we give out awards to prestigious CNAs, and they are nationally recognized, nationally recognized awards. awards. Yeah. So it, they're yeah. a big deal. Big deal. So um, if you think you are qualified for one of these awards, you can submit yourself. Yep. Yep. Or someone else can submit for you. Mm -hmm. So well, we have a lot of individual mm -hmm. members as well, and it's something that we introduced a couple of years ago that an individual can you if if you feel like hey I, I should have the Stella Parish, which we're going to get into these categories in just a second, but hey I should be a Stella Parish Lifetime Achievement Award winner, and but you you're not a facility member, you're an individual member, and uh, let's say you meet the criteria, you can nominate yourself. You don't have to depend on somebody else to nominate you. And yeah, that's always nice to do, but you get to brag about yourself, so do so. Definitely, definitely do so. Absolutely. We want lots of nominations. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to go through the rules mm -hmm. real quick, and then we'll delve into the categories. Yep. So the submissions need to be in by June 1st and mm -hmm. no later. Anything that comes in after that cannot be considered. Right. We need it that early because there's a lot that goes into... Big process this so you want to tell them a little bit about that sure. process yeah you have the judging then you have this which by the way the judges they aren't anybody at the naca office or anything like that we select four completely independent individuals mm -hmm. that have at least some idea of what the profession entails what the industry entails um but uh there's a judging process and the, the finalization on the selection and then, um, and then we order the trophies. You get a tr if you do win, you get a trophy with your name on it, mm -hmm. as well as a pin uh, with a key on it because it's key to quality. Key to quality. Uh, you, uh, with your name on it and what award it is that you won. So there is a bit of a. There's a lot of work that goes into selecting those individuals as well as production of the items to actually provide the award. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's basically the, the gist. Okay. Yeah. So let's go over these rules real quick. So you have to be a NACA member mm -hmm. or work in a NACA member facility. So if you are watching this and you're not a member, but you would like to be considered for an award, you need to go get your membership now. 30 bucks. 30 bucks mm -hmm. a year. And right now we have a really cool leg legacy t-shirt mm -hmm. and that goes through the end of the month yep. and then it won't be available anymore. Yep, exactly. So there it is. you wanna go, go get your membership right now for yep. that. Each nominee must be certified or successfully have completed their school requirements. Yes, yes. Their state requirements. Mm -hmm. So students, unfortunately, cannot unless they have passed their state exam. Right. Okay. Um, nominees have to be employed by a facility for a year. Um, they can... Oh. The, the, there are some considerations. If it, so if you're going in for the... Um, uh, the Bobby Hargrave Rookie of the Year Award, there are some considerations that are made there. Obviously, your rookie year is within your first year. So um, mm -hmm. we have made exceptions in the past with that rule because some a lot of the times you haven't completed your first full year. Okay, so, so in that case, you might note how long you have been at the facility yes. if it's the Rookie of the Year. Yes. Yes. Okay, um, nominees can be submitted online on our mm -hmm. form that is available on the website. Mm -hmm. If you go to CNA Fest on the website, there will be a drop down box and it will show you key to quality nominations. When you click on that, it'll give you the rundown of all the nominations that we're gonna talk about here. And then at the end, it provides you a form to fill out. Um, so you can either do it directly there online or you can print it off and mail it to us or fax it to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you can duplicate that form. So if you want to use it for several people, you can print it off and duplicate it. Mm -hmm. um, if you are nominating one person for more than one award, so if Sally's an exceptional person and you want to nominate her for three different categories, you may do that, but you must do a different form for each category. Yes. And then you need to have the facility administrator or DON sign the form sign before it comes sign in. Yep. Okay, so now there are 13 categories, so we'll get into those. So restorative care professional. Mm -hmm. This is about knowledge and competence in restorative care and possesses the skills to promote the highest practice levels of functioning. Yep. So, um, fairly, 
fairly, I mean, straightforward. Mm -hmm. If you're a restorative nurse aide and uh, you have the, the, the tangibles that are there uh, to be an exceptional restorative care aide, then that would be something that you would either nominate yourself for or ask somebody to nominate you. Mm -hmm. yep. Professional style, that mm -hmm. has to do with how you dress. Yep. So do you... I, I actually provided the award last year. I, I did the, I presented the award last year for professional style. And yeah. something that I always say is that uh, how you, your first impression is by your appearance. And it's very, very important to, if you look good, you feel good, um, and the way that other people perceive you, that's going to be their very first impression of you, no matter how, I mean, it's not a, it's not a on the surface type of thing. It's not uh, a bad thing to be, I mean, as long as you dress professionally, you're ready to go mm -hmm. because how you see, how not only residents, but resident families, your coworkers see you and they haven't met you before. That's always a very, very, very good first impression if you look professional and ready to go. Absolutely. Yep. Outstanding attitude. Yes. There's not much more to say there. Yeah. If you have a great attitude with your coworkers, your patients, your administration, mm -hmm. families, then you are qualified for that award. Yep. Um, devoted service excellence. Yes. So this sets a standard for attendance and delivery of care. Yes. Um, it's it's basically you know if you're on the floor everybody you, you have a reputation mm -hmm. that everybody knows that you're not only going to show up to work which there's going to be an attendance award as well but that you're going to show up for work and you're going to be there and you're not only going to work but you're going to work your tail end off and you're going to provide the best care it's more of like a reputation sort of situation where you are known to provide the best care in the building uh, you're devoted to the service. You're there to work and serve the, the your um, your residents, and and that's apparent. Okay. The Person centered service. This mm -hmm. is a caregiver who has excellent rapport with their residents and their families. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those people that that you know always welcomes the families helps them with their resident, mm -hmm. does whatever they can do to provide a good environment for them. Well, you know, communication's mm -hmm. key uh, in, the, in the care that you provide. And again, so it's a lot like devoted service, but this is really where you're gonna have ex excellent communication skills with not only a resident, but the resident families, let them know what's going on, let, make them feel comfortable. Uh, again, your reputation precedes you in this situation. So it's a lot like devoted service, but this is more wrapping around um, how you deal or communicate with your resident as well as the resident's family members. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellence in leadership. Uh, that seems like a big win to me. That's It's a huge one. It's about it's teamwork and the team approach of things yep. and quality resident care on top of that, mm -hmm. obviously. And just because you're not necessarily specifically a CNA supervisor or the administrator or something, but you lead through example. And how are you as a peer leader? Uh, that's really what we're looking for for that nomination is to explain and describe how you are, in fact, a peer leader. All right. Our next one is CNA Academic Excellence. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's pretty self-explanatory, but it's those people that go above and beyond to learn everything they can about their career and how to yes. be the best provider they can be. Yes. Um, there are some minimum requirements. Mm -hmm. um, you must participate in center-based in services. Yep. You must use the virtual campus of care here at NACA that's mm -hmm. on the website, yep. and which is self-described, self-directed learning, mm -hmm. and um, committing themselves to growth. Oh, so growth as a professional. Yes. That's yep. that's the main gist of that award. Growing yourself, yeah, mm -hmm. growing yourself, and utilizing educational opportunities to help you expand your knowledge base, expand your skills and become a better CNA. Mm -hmm. yep. Next one is preceptor of the year. Would you like to explain, explain what a preceptor is for those people who may sure. not know? Yeah, so a preceptor is a peer mentor. Um, so I was talking about peer leadership earlier, but a peer mentor, what a peer mentor is, is that's typically somebody that is training newly hired CNAs, not only to the best way to do their job, but also the best way to accommodate the center culture. Because I always say that different buildings have different cultures. Um, not just the layout of the land, but how to how to behave, how to you know meet, set your expectations and met, make sure that they're met. Um, our own preceptor course, uh, you have to be a certified preceptor in order to get this through the National Association of Healthcare Assistants through NVCC. Um, but in order to be, be a preceptor of the year, you've got to have you've got to be able to show 
how effective you are as a peer trainer, as somebody that is committed to not only making sure that your new hires have a good time, that they succeed, but they also stay. Um, so that when you're writing your nomination for that, make sure you answer that um, because that's really the big important piece is that and that's the reason why we even started the preceptor to begin with is to help reduce national CNA turnover. Okay. And then our last three are kind of, I think, the most prestigious of yes. the awards. Yep. So the Bobby Hartgrave Rookie of the Year. Yep. Yep. So when you have that new CNA who is a superstar, who wants to learn everything they can, who helps everybody in every possible way, who cares about not only her residents, his or her mm -hmm. residents, but mm -hmm. also the families, the administration, the staff as a whole. Those are the kind of people you want to consider for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, and these are going to be your brand new people that come in and just, you know, your your jaw drops. Just like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> they're in their first year. How, how are they this good? I, I don't know if any of you guys are sports fans or anything like that, but in, in athletics, uh, there's always, in professional sports, there's always like a Rookie of the Year, and it's because they as a rookie they exceed expectations because you're not really expected to do very well as a rookie you're supposed to be learning and doing all of these things but a rookie of the year acts as though they're a veteran but they're not uh, by the length of service that they've done they're not they're not a veteran but they behave that way they they um it's basically an excellence in your profession while <laughs> this person's only in their first year i can't believe they're doing this great mm -hmm. so uh this is really the rookie of the year is something that I would see more so of somebody nominating somebody else, right? Um, as opposed to being you know nominating yourself uh, on this one, I, I would encourage other people to ask. Uh, I would encourage you to ask other people to nominate you for this because this is really going to be, be where you know this is what we're used to seeing from rookies, and you you don't know that because you're a rookie. Um, so this is really important to get somebody else to nominate you. If you're wanting to win the award, I would encourage other people to nominate you. Right. All right. And then NACA Champion of the Year. Yep. So this is a little different in that it doesn't have to be a CNA. No, it doesn't. It can be an administrator, a director of nursing, a staff development person. It can mm -hmm. be anybody in the facility that really promotes NACA within the facility. Yes. And typically speaking, uh, we see a lot of staff development coordinators win this award. Um, also, um, we have what is, and some of our member centers where they where they really focus on the education as part of their membership. Uh, we call it CareForce. Um, we have something that's called an in-house coach, and a lot of the times the in-house coach is chosen to be, uh, and they're, they're the ones that are chosen are like assistant DONs or assistant administrators or staff development coordinators for these positions, and these are typically the type of people that are the best champions for not only NACA, not only CNAs, but the NACA program in its entirety. Okay, very good. And then the major award. This is the big one. Oh, no, this isn't no. it yet. Oh, okay. Assisted Living Center of the Year. Yeah. This is assisted living caregiver of the year. Caregiver of yeah, the year. Assisted yes. living. So basically, it would be um, your um, your excellence as a caregiver, but categorized um, as an assisted living caregiver. So if you're an assisted living caregiver, you don't necessarily work in a nursing home. We wanted to specifically identify those that are excellent in assisted living centers. Nice. See, I was totally off yeah. on my count. Yeah. There are two more. <laughs> yeah, there are two more, yep. CNA member of the year. Yeah, and that is that is probably our second most prestigious award. And mm -hmm. uh, you, it's a lot like assisted living caregiver of the year. Um, but of course you have to be a CNA, you have to be a NACA member in order to- Five, years of, Five years of experience in the center. Yeah. And you have got mm -hmm. to be just top of the line, mm -hmm. which, that's not I mean you're gonna have some competition I don't I'm not just I'm not not encouraging you to nominate yourself or nominate somebody else but this is the prestigious this is one of the most prestigious awards that we have and then the big one the, the big, Stella big one. Parrish Lifetime Achievement Award mm -hmm. I love when Lori tells the story about Stella Parrish yeah. if you all haven't heard that you need to come to CNA Fest to hear it or you need to read Lori's book about everything I learned in life, I learned, learned from long-term care. Long -term care. Yeah. yeah, there's the yeah the book, and there's also some there's also some Stella Parrish in there on um, the coursework on on NBCC about Stella Parrish. But NBC, if if it weren't for Stella Parrish, there probably wouldn't have been a National Association of Healthcare Assistants because she was a peer to Lori that really helped her 
get through some hard times mm -hmm. and about her own profession and what she was even doing there, working in a nursing home as a CNA. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our big one. This is a veteran CNA. This is somebody that's been there, what's the minimum, 20 years? 20 years. And you guys have mm -hmm. almost perfect attendance. And you have, this is this is the coup de grace of all awards that we provide, at least. Mm -hmm. And the award is named for Stella in mm -hmm. honor of her 30 years of experience as a caregiver, and she never missed a single day of work mm -hmm. in those 30 years. So that's why he mentioned not missing work much. Yeah. So. so you have got to have, you've got to show up for work. Um, I, I believe we have... Um, I don't think that we, we ask for perfect attendance in no. 20 years, <laughs> but it's got to be exceptional attendance. I mean, I'm talking, you have to miss like maybe two days in the past couple, you know, past couple decades, <laughs> which is really saying something, but you yeah. have to have above way, 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 way above par um, attendance. Uh, well, and gosh, I think 20 years of experience, mm -hmm. you're already probably an outstanding person. So, And this is something where I can, uh, in terms of comparison to rookie of the year, I think that somebody could nominate themselves for that, um, mm -hmm. but it also helps whenever you have somebody else nominating you as well for this award because it, it's really, really difficult. I, at least for me, uh, it would be very difficult for me to uh, brag on myself that much. Yeah, that's hard <laughs> for a lot of people. Especially with because it yeah. is it is a lifetime achievement award. It's not just a, it's not just you know your regular run of the mill. Hey, you're best at this, or you're best at that sort of award. This is a lifetime achievement award. This is the big, big award. Yeah. Okay. So those are the 13 categories. I want to remind you they're due by June 1st, 2020. You make sure that form is completely filled out. Don't leave anything blank. And I, I do want to say something when you're filling out. If you're filling out a nomination for somebody else, or you're doing it for yourself. First of all, make sure you, act when, and Lisa mentioned earlier that you have to, um, if you're doing more than one award, you have to do a different form. Uh, while you're doing that nomination, while you're filling out the actual substance or the content of that award as to why you deserve it or why this person deserves this award, answer the question as to why this person deserves this award and give us examples. Uh, we do not count on grammar. It's not a spelling mm -hmm. thing. You're not going to be tested on any of that stuff. So don't worry about grammar or anything like that. Just answer the question, brag, 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 tell an anecdote, something that will help make the judges go, this person really deserves this award and answer that question. So if you're doing something for um, academic excellence and you don't mention anything about taking any sort of coursework, we're not going to even consider you for the award or the judges aren't going to even consider you for the award because you didn't mention anything. I mean, you could have went off about all these great things, but you don't say anything about taking education, then, well, I'm sorry, you can't, yeah. and it can't be moved over. So that whatever you nominate for, make sure you, and you can do is you can do all of them if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah, but you do have to meet all the criteria. Meet all the criteria and actually answer mm -hmm. the question as to why this person or you yourself deserve that award. Right. Yeah. So. so that's basically what, that was the main thing that I wanted to say. So we are very excited about the award ceremony this year. Mm -hmm. Be a little rock on the 20th. We'll yep. be there um, August 19th and 20th. Mm -hmm. As Gary showed you earlier, where you could find the nominations, right above that was registration. So you can go on and register if you're planning to come. That way we can have a head count. And then there's also the club account club on count. there. Yep. So if you want to pay a little bit over time to earn your registration, mm -hmm. you know, then that's the way to do it, the easiest way to do it. Yeah, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay everything ahead of time. Uh, you don't have to come up with everything all at one time. Right. You can make little installments as you go. You just have to make sure that you're you're completely paid in full before the event. So I think the fourteenth yeah, everything I has we to be paid by time. August fourteenth. Yeah, so you've got a lot of weeks between now and then yeah, to pay into it. Yeah, so. if you wanted to throw in some money after every check or something. And you can go in. It has logins there so you can see what payments you made. How much you made. You made and, there was yeah. something that was declined. You, you would see that. If it was approved, you would see that. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of do the math there to see, well, okay, how far away am I? Yeah, and also, more do I need Also, to remember, I mean, if you're planning on going to CNA. Oh, one more thing about mm -hmm. the nominations. Um, you are bumped up on the list for the judges. If you select that you're going to be there in attendance to mm. receive the award, because that's one of the questions that is asked: Are, are you going to be there? Because we'd like to have the person there. <laughs> that makes sense. So, and we do notify the facility, right. not you, but yep. the facility that you're Getting going to be award. receiving the award. So yep. they're going to know there's an important reason for you to yep. be there. So even if, um, 
you, you might as well just go ahead if you plan if you plan on nominating yourself just go ahead and get registered you don't have to end up going or anything like you can cancel later if you need to that's fine just get registered and say that you're going to be there to win the award if something comes up you can always we can always figure something else out but you do get bumped up on the list uh, in terms of consideration if you are if you select that you are going to be there to receive the award right because i'm sure they use a yep. point system and, yep. right. yeah exactly Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're sure looking forward to seeing you all at CNA Fest. Yeah. Go get registered and, yes. and put money in your club account. And, we'll um, see you in August. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Well, until then, we'll talk to you next week. Peace out. <laughs>